How did hitchhiking enable me to win the toughest race in Europe? Now, I had a history with this race, Subido a Pico Valletta. I got into it in 2010. And initially when somebody told me about it, my mind was blown because I didn't even know these things existed. It's an ultra marathon starting in Granada and finishing 50 kilometers later on the top of Mount Valletta in the south of Spain. So the gradient gets you, the heat gets you, the altitude gets you, the high altitude gets you, it's cold at the top, it's windy. Any race can be as hard or as easy as you make it. But if you want a hard race that cannot be easy, that's Subido Pico Valletta. And for me, it's the hardest race I've ever done. It's, it's, especially when you're on the limit and you're really pushing it, for me, it couldn't be any more difficult. So how did hitchhiking enable me to win it? So in 2010, when I started, my only goal was to finish the race. I was relatively new to running. I'd been running for eight months at that point. I just wanted to survive and get to the finish before the cutoff time of eight hours. And that was my start. That was the start of the journey with Sabido Pico Valletta. That turned into the thinking of, I want to live in Granada. And by living in Granada, I want to train on that course and get better at this race because I know that if I can be better in this race, it's as hard as I can possibly imagine, I'll be better in the rest of my running. All my other running will, will, will improve. My marathons, my half marathons, my 5Ks, 10Ks, and my ultra marathon because it couldn't be more difficult than this. And that's what I did. So two years later, I moved to the course and then my results became a lot better. And that took me to gradually improving, gradually getting better, improving my position, improving my time. And then in 2016, I was the favorite to win the race because people had seen what I was doing in other races and, and it wasn't just that I was the favorite that pushed me on. I trained and overcooked it. I'd done too much. And so I, got, I went out hard. I went and led the race. As soon as we started the harder climb, I went for it. And I went for an attack from sort of 40 kilometers out from the finish. And I was completely all in. And this is what the rate, this is kind of moving to Granada. It's all an all in move. Going from 40K, it's an all in move. It's what I'm all about, but you have to also insert the strategy and be self-aware of what am I actually capable of. And so in 2016, after finishing the race five times, 2016, I didn't finish because I was having all sorts of problems. The heat got to me for the first time ever because I'd gone out too fast. My stomach was all over the show because I'd gone out too fast. And so when second place passed me at 42, 43K, my head went because I'd come to win the race and set the course record. And both of those things I just saw disappear up the road. I knew that even 7K out, I'm not gonna finish it. Even, I'm not even gonna make the podium. And my head went and regrettably, I still regret it to this day, I, I just dropped out. I got in a car and got to the finish line, got my drop bag and, but it lit an enormous fire in my stomach. And, and the very, very next day, I just began, all my training was dedicated for Sabido Pico Valletta, which meant the midweek interval session was on the course. The weekend long run was on the course. And so that I avoided the traffic, the ski village is at 2,400 meters. So that's very, very busy in the winter. But in the summer, nobody's up there apart from hikers, cyclists who come down on their own, and, and also run, other runners or climbers. That's all who's up there. So there's very little up there, and therefore nothing is open up there, either in the ski village or at the kind of like Hoya de la Mora, it's called, which is like 11K from the finish, from the finish line. So you're going up there knowing full well that nobody's going up there and especially midweek, but I wanted to avoid the traffic. So I moved my interval session and long run to be in the week. So I would go the night before. One tactic I had was to drive up with the bicycle in the back of the car and then cycle back. So descend down and I just do that and it's about 35K and then, and then I'd, I'd have my bike in the house. I'd, I'd run up the mountain, get my, get in my car and that would have recovery, uh, nutrition, etc., And that would be the perfect solution. But then other times when that wasn't available, 
I would run up the mountain and maybe that was a session like five times 10 minutes or 10 times five minutes, an interval session. So you're not going so high up the mountain. And so more people are passing you, so it's easier to get a lift. So I would just thumb a lift and after between, sometimes I'd get lucky and it'd just be five, 10 minutes. Other times it'd be 30, 45 minutes, up to two hours, two and a half hours that I've waited out there. And, and then the heat is getting to you. And then you're thinking this was stupid because the recovery is elongated. If you're doing a long run, it's even worse because then you're going beyond where traffic can go. At the 11K to go barrier, traffic is not allowed to pass there. So first you've got to finish the run and then you've got to get back, back down to the ski center or the ski village and then you can thumb a lift from there. And there's lots of people usually around there at the weekends, but not so many during the week. So it's difficult, so you have to wait. But what it did for me was this. It seems nonsensical because nobody, especially you've got no shirt on, you've got a bottle, you're sweating, you don't smell great, you've got small shorts on, you've got running shoes on, you look like a crazy person and you've got your thumb out on the side of the road and people, are, they don't understand where you're going or where you've been or why you're there. And, and, and so people, it, people drive past you and you can take that personally. And, um, and it doesn't make sense to them. I completely understand that. But what it meant to me was the run was happening. And so no matter whether I needed to wait five minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour or two and a half hours, the run was happening which meant that I was spending long periods of time on my own, both the running and the waiting, which is really, really important. And for me, when I see that in other people, it's a superpower. If you're comfortable in your own thoughts and comfortable on your own and spending time and you don't need external sort of devices or people or distractions or entertainment, you, that is just you in your thoughts. It's very meditative for me and it makes you stronger mentally. 100% it's a massive game changer. What it also does is if you're stood or if you're running up the mountain and people are passing you and you look like a nutter and exactly the same when you stood by the side of the road hoping that somebody's going to pick you up, it also told me that I don't care about what people think about me. This is just me on a pursuit to try and win the hardest race in, in potentially the world and I don't care what people think about me. I'm just out here doing my thing. And so I'm spending lots of time on my own. I don't care about what people think. And those for me, again, when I see them in other people, they're superpowers. If you don't care about what people think about you, you're probably in the top 10% of people in the world in terms of you're completely free to do what you want because you're not doing it to please anybody else. And if you can be in your, on your own for three, four, five, six hours, and ideally for days, weeks, months alone without any external stimulus, it is a superpower. If you have those two things together, it's for me, it's what allowed me to win the race. So yeah, it was the training, it was the interval sessions, it was the long runs, it was the recovery runs, it was the easy runs. It was treating my body as well as I possibly could. It was the strength sessions and everything else that goes into it. But it was also the mentality this is how much you've sacrificed. This is how much you've put into it. This is how much time you've spent alone. This is how much you spent on the side of the road waiting for somebody to pick you up. This is how much you want it. And that for me is being all in.